Well, hello, Vinyl Community people. It's Mike, MGK Boston. And uh, yeah, guess what time it is? It's Vinyl Tag 2024 time. Yes, hosted by the great Rob Walker, our friend from Manchester, England. And he's done a incredible job this year with the questions. They're not too easy, not too hard. They're just right. So um, I better dive into it because there's 20 of them, like I said, and I don't want to waste any time. So anyway, number one. Favorite record you purchased in 2023? This was an easy one for me uh, on this list of questions. So I, this one I got probably last this past summer. So this is a reissue from that music, music for vinyl or whatever that uh, music on vinyl right there. Yes. So I won a contest. Uh, Beetle Destino hosted over there, Dustin, and it was a forty dollar gift card. I got this and something else on Amazon. Um, but yeah, this is just great. Uh, great to have it back in my collection. I never had it on vinyl, like I said. And uh, yeah, it's just awesome. Look, there they are on the back. I'm not a big colored vinyl guy, but this is pretty cool. This blue, right? You can see, you can see the Electra label right there. So yeah, it's X under uh, under the Big Black Sun. It, it was their third release. Uh, in my opinion, it's their best. I just love it. And uh, yeah, on the inside, just cool uh, lyric sheet with some cool artwork. And uh, yeah, X. We'll deal with that later. All right, so where are we here? Number two, just getting into this. The last record you bought in 2023. Well, technically I didn't buy this one. Santa did, and it was under the tree in a Tacny Diamonds. This has been talked about exhaustively in the vinyl community. Um, if you wanna know all things about this album, Mike PC31, The Vinyl Policeman. Please go and check out his review. It's very extensive. Well, very well done, as usual, by Mike. All right, so where are we? I'm just tucking notes in here. It's like a library. Uh, a band or singer who released two or more albums in the same year. All right, I bet you no one did this one. Well, I've watched a lot of videos so far. I haven't seen these. It's Al Cooper's first full, full band, and it's the Blues Project. Uh, their first album was technically this live one recorded in Greenwich Village. 1965, and then the follow-up, the Blues Project uh, projections right there. Yes, featuring the great Al Cooper. All right, there we go. Let's see. We're at number three. If you could only choose music from one decade, which decade would you choose? Well, Steve over at All the World's a Stage, I know he's not a psych psychologist, but he had this theory, and it's proven correct, I think, from most of the videos I've seen. It, his theory was if you're 13 or 14 years old in, in, in a particular decade, Buying your first music, that is the decade that would be the, your decade of choice. So that said, I'm in the 80s, right? So that was my high school years, formative years, great times. And yeah, I'm going with the 80s. Uh, I had a couple of examples here. Oh, here they are right here. So many records. Uh, Steve, <laughs> oh, I just, uh, just never mind. I was thinking of something Steve at the world. All the ones the stage said, but that's pretty cool. funny. I'll say it another time. Uh, here you go, uh, your Rhythmics, yes, from the 80s. Morrissey and Friends, speaking of Manchester. And we got the House Martins, right? Three great 80s acts right there. Can't go wrong with any of those. All right, so, uh, two, two, two. Show a record by a band or singer from Manchester. All right, I knew that. I know Rob Walker likes these guys. It's the debut by the Chameleons, and it's called Strict Script of the Bridge. Uh, 1983, just a brilliant album. Those three studio albums by the Chameleons, I have them all. Shred, they are treasured final possessions. All right. And then just for bonuses here with Rob, I think Rob might have mentioned uh, he went to high school with the guy, one of the guys from the Inspiro Carpets, but it could be off on that, Rob. Please correct me if, I, if that's incorrect. And this is their debut called Life from 1990. CD, because pretty much 1990, to the early 2000s that was my format of choice i had records cds and then i've gone back all right so where are we next year which band or singer did you listen to the most in 2023 well that was pretty easy and uh, i'll tell you why this is all my frank sinatra oh god i don't need to work out because i'm lifting these albums I learned. I gotta learn to take it nice and easy. You know, we gotta be all alone. Maybe I'll form a company, Sinatra and Company. Maybe I'll have the nearness of you, right? Hang out with Antonio Carlos Jobim, or maybe a night at the Sands, right? Who knows, right? 
So anyway, you get the deal. So pretty much kind of a winter sport with me, but sometimes in the summer, on a, usually always on a Sunday afternoon, uh, I like to listen to a Frank Sinatra album and just kind of chill. Uh, I, I really like the vibe, and I'm up to 24 now in the collection. So anyway, that is Frank. Um, so where are we now? Show seven seven-inch records. Um, I can't do that, Rob Walker, but what I can do is show some 12-inch singles. Here's a promo copy on Island, Julian Cope. That's called Trampoline, that track. Speaking of Mike, PC31, The Vinyl Policeman, friends of his. It's The Stranglers, nice and nice. Get behind the wheel with Depeche Mode right there. Absolute Beginners right there, David Bowie. This was a, uh, a feature film that I never saw, directed by some guy named Juliet, uh, Julian Temple. Um, but I did see the name of one of the stars in it, uh, Patsy Kensett. Yeah, wow. Hot blonde from across the pond. She uh, was, I don't know, she was married or hooked up, was with one of the Oasis, one of the Noel or Liam Gallagher. Uh, she's on her fourth or fifth husband, but get in line, right? I guess she's worth it. So anyway, I had Patsy Kensett. Hadn't thought of her in a while and when I was looking at that album just earlier today. I was like, oh yeah, Patsy Kensett. All right, more 12 inch singles. How about Cabaret Voltaire? Don't argue. It's good. No need to argue. How about Blamage? They're living on the ceiling. And who else here we got? We got The Cult, of course, yes. The tribute to Edie Sedgwick. Uh, Edie Chow Baby, yeah, 12 inch single, gotta dig it. So there's seven 12 inch singles. And apparently um, I'm having a party, so what do we got here? Who's coming to your party? Choose four, I'm just looking at my notes here. Choose four music related people to come to an imaginary dinner party, past or present, who would you invite? Well, thought we were gonna have a real rip roar one. I thought about this one a bit and I just wanna make this fun. I want it to be a huge party. Probably the police are gonna show up. It's, there's no doubt when you see this, this guest list. So it's hosted by George Jones, right? So he'd be greeting you at the door, right? Hopefully he's not armed uh, with anything other than a whiskey bottle because things could get a little ugly with George in the 70s. So there he is right there. He's the host of the party and also on the guest list here. Yes, it's Belinda, right? So I figured George would hit on her in the first hour or two before he passes out. Uh, yeah, who else are we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, why not, right? It's Ginger Baker, total lunatic. Love to fight, amongst other things. Um, uh, just a wild guy. Beware of Mr. Baker. I, that was a crazy documentary. If you ever get a chance to stream that one, please do. Beware of Mr. Baker. And there's a reason it's called Beware of Mr. Baker. But yeah, he's coming to the party anyway. He said he's available, so. All right. And then have a little comedy too, right? Why not? Yeah. Uh, Rodney Dangerfield show up. So this is a still photo from a movie he did around 1984-85 called Back to School. The whole plot of the film, basically he's a multimillionaire that owns a chain of fat and tall clothing stores. And uh, he's so he decides his son's going to college. He's like, I didn't finish high school, uh, but I'm going to go to college with my son just for the hell of it, right? So he it's called Back to School. So this this scene is near the beginning of the film. Whereas ex soon to be ex wife, she's only in the movie for about ten minutes. Adrian Barbo, a total smoke show back in the day, and um, he catches her cheating on uh, him with some guy in the closet. And, he, and then he comes out and he's walking down this hallway, and all the artwork is on display because he lives in this nice mansion. And this this guy, look at this, doesn't that scream nineteen eighty five? He's oh, Mister Mellon, because his name was Thornton Mellon. We were just admiring your wife's Klimft, meaning Gustav Klimft, the artist. But uh, of course, Rodney Dangerfield quips, well, you're not the only one. <laughs> uh, he was so funny. And if you look up old clips on YouTube when he was on Johnny Carson and just doing stand-up, and of course his routine in Las Vegas, I wish I would have been around. Well, I, I was just too young at the time to see Dangerfield. But yeah, one of, one of the funniest guys. Next to Norm MacDonald in the world of comedy, tough to beat. All right, so... Um, yeah, that's a that's the guest list so far, and it's not over yet. Yes, just to bring some levity and some calmness, we're gonna bring in uh, the beautiful Emmy Lou right there. There she is, right? So maybe she can just hang on the side, playing her guitar, acoustic guitar, and just looking great, right? Uh, calm to this this crazy party. All right, where are we now? All right, we lost them in 2023. So I guess show someone who just passed away. We can do that. Yeah, it's the late great Miles Goodwin. Uh, yeah, so from Montreal, there's he's wearing his Montreal Canadiens jersey, the Habs as they're called, up in Canada. So they're uh, Nature of the Beast, this record from 1982. 
uh, I saw this tour. It was one of the very first concerts I saw. I was probably 12 years old up in Ottawa. And uh, yeah, Miles Goodwin, he just passed last, this past December. Didn't know he was actually ill. Followed him on Facebook. He was like, he'd retired a couple of years ago, spent a time with his wife and grandchildren. Back living, I think, in the Halifax area. I'm going to have a sip of this college beer. This is a long speech. And so anyway, Miles, yeah, so he just died. So rest in peace, uh, Miles Goodwin. All right. Name some, uh, no, if you could listen to music from only one country, which would it be? Well, I waffled a bit on this, like a lot of you have, but I ended up going across the pond, as I say, over to England. I didn't say the United Kingdom because Rob was pretty specific country. So if I said the UK, that would maybe encompass Scotland and others, and that would have got messy, complicated. So it's straight up England. Certainly no shortage of choices. Yeah, Sex Pistols. See, this ties in. Uh, you know, my favorite decade, like I said, the 80s, right? So a lot of this stuff, they were just, all the bands I was listening to, like I said, yeah, Sisters of Mercy, Floodland, Masterpiece, Susan the Banshees, Through the Looking Glass. This is an album of covers. Uh, great version of Your Lost Little Girl by The Doors on that, not to be missed. Psychedelic First, self-titled debut. Come on, it's awesome. You came to my party at my house in 1985. And this is the playlist. And Mike Oldfield for later later in the evening. So I'm a big Mike Oldfield. Oldfield fan. Him, of course, from England as well. And lastly, we got the Cult live right there in London at the Lyceum Theater. Really great live set from '84. All right. So uh, number eleven. Excuse me. Name some new vinyl communities. Uh, vinyl community channels. There's only one vinyl community. Name some new channels you discovered. So I picked some channels that. Purposely, uh, all of these are under 500 subscribers, and I like to do shoutouts. I don't get some of the, the huge channels that don't do more shoutouts to the uh, the smaller channels. It's it's really, it helps. It's 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 kind of inspirational when you're, like I remember when I had 85 channels and I did the vinyl tag my first year, I, sh I got a shout out. Um, I think I can, Greg at the vinyl, I can't, I can't remember his channel. I don't, he's not making much videos anymore. Uh, but he gave me a shout out and it gave me a boost right over 100 and I thought that was really awesome. But anyway, here we go. We got um, Young LP Lovers. This is Curtis Young, big reggae guy and I love Curtis's videos. He's a teacher over in, speaking of Nova Scotia, when I mentioned Miles Goodwin, uh, I believe that's where uh, Curtis lives. Likes a lot of reggae, so do I. Uh, great channel. He's at 315, so congratulations, Curtis. You just surpassed 300. This is my friend Keith right here. It's the attack from down under. Don't worry, Keith is a super mellow guy. He's not going to attack. I just wish he'd smile a little more. He's very serious, but uh, real chill guy. He makes cool videos. If you like heavy rock and metal, this is your guy. I just find him really chill to listen to. And um, he's a guy I'd, I'd like to hang out with, you know, all right? So anyway, he's in New Zealand and uh, he's at 141. Let's get him some subscribers, people. Come on. You know what I feel like? I feel like one of those guys on NPR Public Radio where they're having their annual funding drive. And I'm like, please call now and support the channel. Support us and I'll, we'll send you a free coffee mug. I can't do that. I don't know if I get a coffee mug to send you, but just subscribe to these channels, okay? Fitz Electric Bar, he's over in Vancouver, British Columbia. Great channel. He's at 385. Uh, you know what? 392, man. Come on, he's on the cusp. Get, let's get him over. Get over that 400, man. Cool guy. Fitz right there. Fitz Electric Bar. Yes, and it's Anthony Gambler812. I've mentioned Anthony a bunch of times because I've got to know Anthony this fall. He just lives about a 40-minute ride from me, uh, north of me, and we met at a record show. I went over to his house, too, around Christmas season, and uh, we made that video. A lot of fun. Super guy, and we're going to hook up real soon. And uh, there he is right there, Gambler812, Anthony. Just an awesome guy. All right. Oh, uh, do, 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 I miss one. No, I'm not. I'm not there yet. What am I doing? Show a record you bought when you were a teenager. All right, now here it is. Embryonic Robot just showed their debut, so I'm going to show the follow-up. Uh, this is uh, Alien Shores um, right here. So I saw this this tour in Kingston, Ontario. Another one from like 11th grade. That was a big year for me because it was 1985. And uh, yeah, Situation Critical and Crying Over You, good ones on here. They look like a hair metal band, but they're not. They're totally like a synth poppy, new wavy looking. They're not set, more sounding, not looking. And uh, that's the kind of sound here. So anyway, it's, uh, yeah, it's a record I bought when I was a teenager. All right, where are we at? 
Um, show a funk or soul record. All right. So what do we got? Here it is. Oh, yeah. So I would have invited Rick to the party, but the cops would have shown up way too early if Rick was there. It's, uh, it's Rick James. Yes, this is his third album, uh, second album from 1979, and he's busting out of L7. That's some sort of prison, not the band L7. I love that. The guard tower. It's a serious joint. I guess the guards are up there smoking a joint while they're watching Rick escape right here with his ladies. So that's a good example there of a funk or soul record. It's Rick James. All right. Uh, one record everybody has and a record nobody else, nobody has. All right, well, I think everybody has this. I didn't look up the stats on Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Uh, not much I can say about it. Again, it's one of those everybody knows it. Um, but it, this was a huge mover. I would expect a lot of units sold. So that's a record I think that everybody has. And a record I think that everybody doesn't have is Pile Driver. I've never seen this anywhere, actually. I bought this on a lark at a store that's now gone on the, on Young Street, which is a main thoroughfare in Toronto. When I was in high school, I was up there for a weekend visit my grandparents and they were blasting this on the stereo. This really wasn't something I was into at the time. As you saw that uh, 80 stuff I was showing, this was total metal, but it's really fun and it almost, it's almost parody and I, I love it. And this is worth quite a few bucks on Discogs, believe it or not. And it's the Metal Inquisition by Pile Driver. That's a record I don't think people have in general, no. I don't think Rob Walker has that for sure. All right, uh, record by a female artist you bought in 2023. Bought this at a record show last February. It's her third uh, release here, Rita Coolidge. And uh, The Lady's Not For Sale. Really great singer-songwriter album. If that's what you're into, don't miss that one. All right, and uh, where are we here? The, the favorite video you posted on your channel in 2023 and the favorite video you watched in the vinyl community in 2023. So I'll... Um, the favorite video I posted was, uh, it was twofold. Uh, I did one with my mother, Patty and I were up to Ontario to visit family, uh, early November. And I made a video with my mother. It was great on her 95th birthday. And then we also, then we traveled the five hours West and we were down, uh, in uh, Northern Revolutions territory. That's where Northern Revolutions headquarters is. Uh, if you don't know it, check out that channel too. Uh, anyway, speaking of Canadian content. So, and then I did a video, we, well, my in-laws performed, did a video for us, very musical. If you haven't checked it out, please go uh, and check out those videos. I'll leave links to these as well as these other people I've mentioned, uh, the, these channels. I'll just do that at the end to maybe make it easy for everyone. So that's a favorite video I posted in 2023. Uh, favorite video uh, that I watched while well, I was actually in it. And speaking of Northern Revolutions, there we are at World Headquarters. Uh, Rob grew, grew up and still lives in the, my wife's hometown. Uh, southwestern Ontario and there we are we had a great time and we went to a concert that night went to see Whitehorse it was awesome so yeah go check out that video it's called uh, MGK's in the house and that's on Northern Revolution's channel right there and of course there's Rob right go Blue Jays all right where are we at here um so show me a record you would describe as a 90s classic this is twofold debuts awesome follow-up Dogman Stars equally good i couldn't decide so here they both are rob walker i'm sure you're familiar with both of those featuring the vocal stylings of brett anderson those are cds like i said because that's all i bought for that decade the night that we know is the 90s that decade all right uh it's like a greatest hits show a record you're so familiar with it plays like a greatest hits album that's easy this is simple minds right here uh this would be their sixth studio lp from 1982 only only matt unmet only surpassed rather by the follow-up Sparkle in the Rain. And I saw that tour in Toronto and probably, I was probably in 10th grade, I was young. Saw that tour. This one, front to back, every track, no doubt. Starts off with Someone Somewhere in Summertime. Promised You a Miracle, those are the hits. New Gold Dream, the title track is amazing. Glittering Prize and on and on it goes. Hunter the Hunted, I mean the whole thing. It's just, you gotta, it's one of those I just always play it through. It's never just a one side effort with that one. All right, we're almost at the end here, people. If you could walk into the cover of an album uh, look through your collection and choose a record you'd like to be a part of. Well, I showed this one recently. It's uh, Jerry Garcia Band uh, with Merle Saunders on the keys. And just this backstage photo, it's just tremendous. Yeah. You know, it's not going to get too crazy. Uh, there's a cop. But uh, yeah, he's probably, he looks like he's having a pretty good time. He just blazed one too. So they're just hanging backstage. I could just easily walk in there and hang out. I could get talking to everybody. Like Patty says, I'll talk to anybody. And that looks like a fun group. All right. 
so where are we at? We're at the end here, people. Yes. All right. Uh, we got Show Me an Album uh, that was released in 1974 and is turning 50 this year. All right. It's Dickie Betts, otherwise known as Richard Betts, um, guitarist from the Allman Brothers Band. Anybody that watches my channel regularly would know I'm a big fan of, of uh, anything Allman Brothers, and that would include this Dickie Betts solo debut. And then, of course, he formed the band Great Southern, and a lot of the musicians that appeared on this debut are, were in that band Great Southern, and they did a couple albums too, and I have those too, but I'm just showing this one from 1974 because it's turning 50 this year. So, all right. It's not Friday, but I'll say a Friday. I'll say a Thursday. Cheers. I'm parched after all this chitter chatter. So I uh, saw so many great videos this week. Excellent responses, people, to this. Really great. I really look forward to the, um, the vinyl tag every year. And this year was challenging and uh, more fun than any other year before. So that's, that's great in life when things can keep getting better, right? So anyway, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, you'll, yeah, you'll see me probably tomorrow. So <laughs> have a good night. I'll see you next time.